Welcome to Flash CS6 Tutorial 41 Connect the Dots Digitally Part 2 It's a follow-up to the CS6 Tutorial 40 which is Connect the Dots Digitally and that's the FLA I have opened on my computer. If I tested this right now it would just go through the loops and keep building this plane. Okay, so now we got to do some things uh, for when the person selects the buttons. And the first thing I want to do is make a movie clip for if the wrong button has been clicked. So I want to lock all my layers. Select the highest layer I have. Insert a layer. Call it a gain. A-G-A-I-M. I'm just going to click here, open my properties panel for a minute. I want to see the size of my 550 by 400. Okay. Making my stage a little bit smaller. Selecting frame one of this again layer. I want to pick up a fill. I'm going to pick up a yellowish orange thing here. I don't need a stroke. And I'm going to make a rectangle. Pick up my rectangle tool. Make a rectangle, pick up my selection tool, highlight it, open the properties panel, and make sure this chain is unlocked, like that. And the width is 550, and the height was 400. That's the size of my stage. And now I want to center it. So I have something called the alignment panel right here. If you don't have the alignment panel here, look under window and click on alignment. There it is there. And that panel will open. You want to make sure this little check mark aligned to stage. Click here. Horizontally centers it. And click here. Vertically centers it. While it's all fuzzy, if it isn't fuzzy, selection tool, highlight it. Right click. Uh, convert it to a symbol. This time make sure a movie clip is selected. And call this again, A G A I N, shift underscore M C. Copy that name. Open up the properties panel. There's the movie clip again, and paste that in for an instance name. Now, if I double click on it, now I'm inside the movie clip again. Call this layer background B G. Lock it. Insert layer, call it text, T E X T. Uh, go over to your text tool here and open the properties panel, my text tool. I want static text times new Roman. I want it to be a, oh, let's make it red. Red. And click this embed. Upper, lower, numerals, and punctuations. They probably are already selected, but if not, select them. Okay. And make a big text box here. T R Y, try, space, A G A I N. Try again. And you can center that. I'm going to actually highlight that, open my properties panel. And make that much bigger there I'm up to 91 and selection tool and I got to spell try correctly T R Y so click on it T R Y try again okay um, select this frame two of both of these click come down in one motion come off come back on right click Insert keyframes. Click these down in one motion. Come back on, right click, clear frames so there's nothing in them. So now there's nothing on frame one. This is the, um, this is scene one. There's nothing on frame one of my movie clip. Uh, if I jump here, I see this. I want this sign this this notice to show for a little about like a, a second and a half it's 24 frames a second so if I go up around 50 frames it's going to be a little over a second so click here in one motion 
right click insert a keyframe and that will see see that when they select the wrong button lock that layer select that top layer insert layer call it action script as and select that first frame open the actions panel and stop open close bracket semicolon so now we're sitting on nothing and when we click the wrong button we're going to go through like that it'll loop back and stop again so let's go back to scene one make sure all the layers are locked select the top layer insert a layer call it action script as select frame one open the actions panel and type 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 this code starts off with a stop stop open and close bracket semicolon stop turns blue we're going to make a variable the variable is going to keep track of which button needs to be pressed next so var turns purple space we're calling it count c o u n t capital c equals one semicolon now here's that first button dot one underscore btn capital d period add event listener small a capital e capital l that will turn blue if you spell it right open bracket mouse event capital m capital e that will turn blue if it's spelled right period click all capitals c l i c k all uppercase comma and i'm calling this function dot one capital d o t one close bracket semicolon this calls that function up function f u n c t i o n turns purple space dot one that's that ver that's that uh function name we just made open bracket event small e v e n t turns blue colon mouse event copy mouse event paste it in close bracket colon void void is the same color as function here's the open curly bracket for the function and as you start to type another curly close curly black bracket will come that's that one way down here if not we'll put it in so open curly bracket if if turns purple open bracket count equal equals one equal equals one two equal signs close bracket that's that variable we made and it will be one when we start so if it's equal to one another open curly bracket again when you start typing another closed curly bracket will probably appear if not we put it in the first thing i want to do is make this variable count equal to count plus one semicolon that's what makes it increment to let it know the next time i go through i gotta press button two also i want to go to the next frame the next frame is where we're going to um, allow the the thing to pick up that line between 13 and 1 right up here so next frame small n capital f turns blue open close bracket semicolon semicolon close curly bracket now if we were on some other number and we pressed one by mistake this is where this else comes in else e l s e turns purple open curly bracket again underscore mc that's that movie clip we made that says try again period go to and play small g small t capital a capital p open bracket two close bracket semicolon that tells it to play that sign that says try again for a little over a second and there should be a closed curly bracket and a closed curly bracket so now let's leave this for a second let's just try this i want to show you something test movie test now you see i'm showing the whole airplane i don't want to do that so let's go back to the main timeline and this picture right here even though we have it hidden here when we test the movie it's shown but i don't want to lose this picture so what i'm going to do is double click on this layer this window opens up click mask okay and you'll see a little circle with a screen in it that will not be seen when we test this movie now control test movie test the only button i have code for is this one when i click it it draws that line in 
If I click it again, which I shouldn't because count has went to two now, this would be the button to click now. But if I made a mistake, it'll say try again. And about a second later, it'll let me try the next button. So now it's easy from here. I'll do one, one or two with you. Start here, click all the way up so I get all of this for button dot one. Right click, copy all that. Come down to the bottom, click here, couple enters, paste it in. Now you just got to change the dot one to dot two. So there's my first one. This one, make this a two, make this a two, make this a two, make this a two. This stays the same, this stays the same. So now how simple can that be? Test the movie test. So I'm gonna press two by mistake, it tells me try again. Press two by mistake, it tells me try again. I press one, that comes in. If I press two, that line comes in. So all you gotta do is do the rest of your buttons. I will do that and get back to you. Okay, I believe I have mine all done. Uh, I'm gonna test my movie. And I'm just gonna click a couple of these buttons, try again. I will do them all eventually, try again. Try again, okay, this time I'm gonna go through it right. One gives me that, two gives me that, three gives me that piece, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Good. Now, you can leave it like that and, and it's over. That's, that's all you, you can say, it's done. Or you could finish it a different way. Let's try to get rid of those dots and those numbers on the last line here. So, uh, dots right here. That's them. If I lock all the layers, look at that layer. That's my lines. I want to keep those. It's the dot buttons there. See that? The first thing I'm going to do is try to get rid of them. And the easiest way to get rid of them is to clear that frame. So click on it. Get that fuzzy square. Drag that in one. Click here. Right click. Remove that frame. So we're going to just see this. what happens here. Control test movie test and see if I can get through it one two three four I'm gonna get one wrong here for a minute there it's working five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and this would be the telling one thirteen there we could do that to get rid of the dots uh, the numbers same thing in this case here we click here get off get the fuzzy square take it to the left right click remove that frame this will also work test this one and we should have no numbers or one two three four five I'll get one wrong here just to make sure it's working just checking once in a while six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen no dots and no one more way, and this is the way I'm going to do mine. Because this picture was made in pieces, you may find trouble trying to fill it with the fill bucket. So what I did was unlock that layer. I highlighted it, and I deleted it completely. Deleted that, and um, I even went up here in my permanent lines, unlocked that layer, and I deleted those so that I have nothing up there on my um, stage for that last frame. So lock that one, lock them all. Then I went down to my picture layer here and you see my pictures? That's the only layer that's unlocked. I got my, I know this one fills because I tested in the very beginning. So I'll get my cross here, right click, I copied that, lock it unlock this last one here this dot lines right click paste in place 
And that's when I picked up my fill bucket, for example, I picked up a red and I filled some colors red, some blue, whatever. Okay, and when I'm finished, this is what I had when I'm finished. And there is my end result for when I jump to that 13th one. So now let's put everything back the way I can see it. All the layers are locked. Let's just test this final one. One is good. I'll press a wrong button once in a while just to make sure they work. Two is good. Three is good. Four is good. Five. Whoops. Five. Six. Nine isn't good. Okay, so that's working. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now instead of just filling that line in, it's going to give me the whole complete drawing. I hope you learned something from this tutorial and I hope you use what you learn.